This is the September 14th, 2021 Borough Council work session. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Flynn to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Bernie. The next item on our agenda is comments, suggestions, petitions by residents and attendants regarding items that are not on the agenda. Do you have any such comments? Mr. Flynn. Thank you. Good evening, everyone and citizens of Westchester Borough. Well, on September 11th, 2001 at 8.45 a.m. on a clear, Tuesday morning, an American Airlines Boeing jet 767 loaded with 20,000 gallons of jet fuel crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact left a gaping burning hole near the 80th floor with a 110 foot skyscraper, instantly killing hundreds of people, trapping hundreds more on the higher floors. Peter Mulligan was on the 103rd floor, my relative. Uh, so it's very important to me, September 11th, he never got out. As the evacuation of the tower, it was twin. As the evacuation of the tower and its twin got underway, television cameras broadcasted live images of what initially appeared to be a freak accident. Then 18 minutes after the first plane hit, the second Boeing 767, United Flight 175, appeared out of the sky, turned sharply towards World Trade Center, and sliced into the South Tower near the 60th floor. A total of 2,996 people were killed in the 9-11 attack. Citizens from 78 countries died in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. At the World Trade Center, 2,763 died after the two planes slammed into the Twin Towers. That figure includes 343 firemen and paramedics, 23 New York City fire officers, 37 Port Authority officers who were struggling to complete the evacuation of the building and save workers on the upper floors. At the Pentagon, 189 people were killed, including 64 on American Flight 77. The airliner struck the building, and Flight 93, 44 people died when the plane crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Just one night, a world that keeps on pushing. Stand by.
one of our own was there that day. His name is Hector Mojica, badge number 1339, a 20-year veteran on duty that fateful day. The 41st Precinct sits at the edge of the Bronx. That area is commonly known as Fort Apache. There was a full-length movie written about that area because of the violence. After a police radio notification, the precinct all rushed to the roof of the building to find hell raining down from the Twin Towers. Well, what do heroes do? They don't run from the problem, they run into the problem. Our, Herrick, our Hector spent two continuous days uh, without seeing his family and taking care of all those who needed help on 9-11 and 9-12 and 9-13. Mr. Galley. Bernie Flynn and Dana deserve the lion's share of the credit for this. Um, we've prepared a citizen's commendation award uh, for Hector. And I think this is the first time I ever remember council uh, doing something like this since I've been on borough council. Um, and it reads, now therefore, on behalf of the citizens of Westchester and the Westchester Borough Council, it is with great honor and pride that we recognize and commend Hector Mojica who went on duty on September 11th, 2001 as a patrolman for the city of New York, displayed valor, courage, and most of all, patriotism in the face of international terrorism. Borough Council is pleased to honor your service on September, 14, uh, on September 14th, 2021 with appreciation and respect as a member of our community. Thank you, Council, for allowing us to do that. I am. <clears throat> Thank you all. You know, out of my heart, I appreciate the thoughts. Um, like Bernie said, Bernie lost for the family. And what I lost a lot of family members. I started Mr. Day. Partners in the, in the hospital, yes. She went in yesterday for surgery for cancer. So, eleven. And every day, someone's dying that I know. So I think all I ask from all of us audience never say goodbye to your family yeah I'll see you later because you know what that goodbye could be the last one I'll see you later means that you come back home think about that just two goodbyes say see you later so i do appreciate it Bernie. thank you okay i do it again believe me we'll do it again so you know what we hit it we all americans we're here to serve our country and we serve it proudly. My son is going to overseas in the next few uh, next few weeks. We'll see him for 18 months. Serving it in the army. So please keep him in your thoughts too. And again, that's American. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Not entirely sure how to transition to a uh, contract with our wastewater facility. 
uh, from that presentation. Um, but here we go. The uh, next item on our agenda is to enter into a contract uh, with IEG slash Avoqua for the Taylor Run Wastewater Digester Gas Safety Equipment Replacement Project at a cost of approximately $65,000. Oh, Don wasn't here. Oh, yeah. Hey, how are you? Congratulations. Can you let us know briefly what's going on with this one? Yes, we want to replace gas piping. It uh, that's where all the sludge goes, and methane gas contained in that piping, and then goes out through our our. Uh, That's piping for other safety issue. Great, thank you. Any questions from council? I, I, you know, I sort of just assume if you don't say it's not that it is. <laughs> but thank you, Bernie. Um, any questions from anyone else on this uh, agenda item? Uh, consent on number four. Thank you. The uh, next item on the agenda is to approve the updated declaration of public trust covenants, conditions, and restrictions for the Chester County Municipal Grant Program relative to the Everhart Park Playground Project. Keith. Hello, Keith Karowski, Director of the Parks and Rec Department. Um, to a, a bit, this is kind of housekeeping. In, for us to receive the funds from Chester County, which is $90,000, they have to update our declaration of public trust, comments, uh, conditions, and restrictions. And basically, in a nutshell, what that says is that this land will remain park or open space in perpetuity. That's it. Seems fairly simple. Any uh, questions from council? Questions from uh, anyone else? Consent? Alrighty. Number six, Keith, you're back up. Enter into a contract with BCI Burke Company for the purchase and installation of equipment for the playground project. Again, this is part of the overall process. This is not an ask for anything more. This is part of the overall project scope. You just have to enter into this agreement to make it official so we can uh, use the co-op source well to purchase all the equipment and make sure everything's here in a timely fashion. Great, and all of this is part of the grant funding that we got. Correct. Uh, any questions from council? Yeah, Nick. Well, Nick can't use his microphone, so we'll move on. Uh, I appreciate that, President Kalik. <laughs> um, future, would it be possible to indicate secured by grant funding, just for the record? I, I feel like that would just make it easier to read, especially if you're just sure. coming in for the first time tonight and you don't have sure. saga in your head. Yeah, I think that's a good idea and probably something that I don't know who puts the items on the agenda initially. You know, when we do. <laughs> it, it, it comes from me so, to public works, then okay. to council, or to Dana, or to Bill to council. So I can certainly make that a note. Yeah, and we should do that for everyone else. Um, public works, et cetera. We're getting grant funding for a project to so just throw that in a parenthetical. Makes sense. Cool. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Can we get uh, consent on number six? Number seven is to discuss the waste well curbside composting partnership. So yeah, Mr. Galley, we at, at the committee level, uh, we feel uh, comfortable making a decision for the entire council. And uh, Mr. Williams is going to do a, pres uh, a, a description of what this this curbside uh, garbage pickup is. Okay. Cool. Good well. evening, everyone. Uh, so really quickly, just want to start recapping uh, why we're pursuing a composting program here in the borough. Here's a handful of reasons. Uh, top, no, tell you. Uh, top two or three are environmental. Um, the last three are ones that I think we can all get behind. Um, our uh, Chester County landfill has less than 15 years capacity. Uh, when it's full, we'll have to build another one somewhere else. It's not going to be in Chester County. We'll be exporting our trash to uh, other communities. It's going to be a lot more expensive. It's going to be further away. That's going to increase costs. So 
for the borough. So we should do everything in our interest to extend the capacity of the landfill. <clears throat> uh, trash collection is a very expensive process for us internally. And uh, one of those reasons why it's expensive is the tipping fees. We pay $72 a ton uh, to dispose of the trash that we take to the landfill. And I'll circle back to that number in a little bit. Uh, this summer, the Sustainability Committee has looked at four different models for implementing composting in a community like Westchester, different costs, different complexities to each model. And that committee ultimately decided that the sustainable, the financially sustainable option is to partner with a private company that does this and, and implement it in a fee-for-service model. That uh, took us to a company called Wastewell. They're the only company that services uh, this part of Chester County. So we reached out to them and uh, started brainstorming how we could work together on this. Um, this is how it works. You get a big bucket, and when you sign up, these are all the things you can put in it, uh, which you would otherwise be putting in your trash. Um, every two weeks, you put it outside. If you live in an apartment building, you put it like in behind the apartment building. They come pick it up. Uh, you put a, a compostable bag in there, so they're just like picking up the bag out of the bucket, and uh, you keep it going. Um, traditionally, if you were to go to Waste Well and sign up today, that would cost you $18 a month. Uh, the, the agreement we uh, developed here has that same service available to Westchester residents at a 17% discount, um, and my favorite part is for every 10 residents that sign up in Westchester, Waste Well will pick up from one low-income resident for uh, $1 a month for that resident. So that's a 95% discount because we don't think that uh, composting should be limited to those with disposable income. So how to make the numbers work? Well, the borough uh, under this agreement would help offset that discount, offset some of uh, Waste Well's uh, lost revenue there. Uh, keep in mind, I said that the, we pay $72 per ton at the landfill. The average waste well customer compost, i.e. diverts from the landfill, 416 pounds per year. That comes out to uh, 15 in, in our fees. That would be every customer saves us $15 in our tipping fees. And so in acknowledgement of that and to help the numbers work out a little better, um, the proposal is that the borough would then chip a dollar per month, $12 a year back to waste well to make the numbers work. So saving 15, paying 12, that's savings of three. Uh, last week, we agreed to uh, project the numbers as if uh, people would sign up in 2022. So we're projecting a $300 net savings if we were to implement this program. So from here, uh, and we went to the committee, we don't have a, a, a full legal agreement yet, but we, want, we took this to the committee last week uh, to just make sure we're right on the right track, see if there's uh, changes we need to make or, you know, maybe start from scratch and pursue a new idea. But, um, you know, again, composting is really great for our community, a lot of environmental benefits, a lot of financial benefits. And we, we've tried this a couple different times. We've gotten grant funds. We've built these programs. Grant funds go away. The program goes away. So, again, this is the way that we believe to do this on a permanent basis and make it. Uh, from here, we would get a formal agreement, take that back to council for your approval, uh, get the word out, enroll customers, educate them on how it works, and uh, start composting. So again, tonight we're just looking for approval of the framework and, and really this. Uh, agreement here, the, uh, <laughs> the, the savings and the uh, $1 back per month customer to waste well. This is a cool idea. Thanks, Will. Um, the agreement that we would have with Wastewell, uh, did you say how long that would be? Is, is that for a, a term of yeah. a number of years? Yeah, haven't worked that out yet, okay. but, you know, I I'm guessing it would be two years initially and, and you know, renew it every, every year from there on out. Just so I understand, if I, let's say I wanted to enroll in this once we establish it, I would pay Wastewell directly $16 a year, or a, a month. $15. $15 a yep. month. This is the price to the customer. Gotcha. And then this is sort of behind the scenes with that $1 gotcha. per customer. And then the borough's a, sort of subsidizing that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any other questions from council on this?
Is there supplementary like uh, marketing materials, rollout marketing campaign? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the company Wastewell. I think their website is mywastewell.com. Incredible marketing, educational stuff. Um, we, you know, it's this is uh, the gist of it right here. These are the instructions, but we talked about doing educational campaigns, events, you know, meet and greet, figure out how it works for people who are interested. Um, I, I think we have a high level of interest in the community, but it's hard. Composting is kind of hard to do, like. In borough backyards, uh, it, it's uh, it, it's trash. We're talking about routing trash, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of tough to manage. Nor do I think we really want to necessarily encourage it in some of our like tighter neighborhoods. So um, I, I think this is a good option. But the the company is, has really good clean materials, and they're really good at the education piece. Thank you. This is a fantastic idea. Thank you. I, I feel like we will get way more than a hundred people to sign up for this in the borough in a year. This would be extremely popular. Um, I would even dare say if this becomes popular, something we look at making compulsory composting. I know there are municipalities and big cities, like I think Seattle, where it is compulsory to, to compost. Um, I, I'm lucky enough that I have a space in the yard where I can compost in the mm -hmm. back, but I think there are a lot of people, you're right, who can't, so this would be enticing to them to, they want to, but there's no way to do it. So this would be, this is an incredible idea. Mr. Gally, or any plan? What I mentioned to Mr. Williams was that the uh, take the number of people he figures 100 people uh, to place in his budget for 2022 with the bur and hit in, in the sustainability uh, budget the uh, the amount of money. So it's earmarked. It then will come out of the general fund. If it'll be already in the budget, the line item. If we don't use it, we don't use it. But it's not an enormous amount of money. But there should be a placeholder for it. You know, so we know it's there. I agree. That's a good idea. Thanks, Bernie. Um, just a logistical question about uh, apartment buildings. So I live in a like three-story apartment building. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious about that, and also like Green Tree or uh, any of the larger apartment buildings, how that looks. Yeah, I, I mean, in terms of like where you put your bucket out every every two weeks, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think it'll have to be property by property. Um, if they are able to access the building, apartment door. That works in some, you know, if it's uh, like a, a a big old borough house that's been chopped up into apartments, um, that that might work. Uh, or you know, out front, out back, if it's green tree or something like that, probably have to have a designated spot and you know work with the property manager to make sure they're okay with it as well. But it's also really good advertising. You have that bucket out there with their name on it. And yeah, I, I think apartments are a good uh, untapped resource. Any questions from anyone else in attendance on this man? Yes, please. And state your name and address for the record. Hi, Beth Ann Rossica, 338 West Minor Street. I know that at the special finance committee meeting a couple weeks ago, there was talk about potentially charging for trash and recycling collection because the borough is not currently charging for that now. And I didn't know if there was any thought about how to combine this program with whatever initiatives you're doing that way. I mean, if we want to encourage people to do this, maybe there's a way to combine that with whatever we're considering charging as some sort of offset, just a suggestion in terms of looking at it as a full package. Thank you. Thank you. I saw another hand raised with a question. Yes, ma'am. Next time you'll sit up front. <laughs> I'm always in the back. Nicole, Nicole Shimoni, 505 Keystone Alley. Um, just a question on the, the fees. So the $15 a, a resident is based off a forecast of 100 people for 2022. Would there actually be a discount that would happen, you know, with economies of scale if the number of residents actually use this program in future years? Like if there were 300 people, would it be, I don't know, $10 customer, et cetera? We haven't gotten that far discussing it, but I think it's a good idea. Certain thresholds, we can get lower rates. Um, you know, running this business, the tricky part is the logistics of pickup. And when I approached them, my first point was, we, we have a lot of interested people in a very small geography. So um, that's how we got to the discount in the first place. They recognize that they are you know, 
getting customers, but getting like easy customers. It's going to really help with logistics, um, not have to drive all over Chester County to pick up uh, between customers. They're, they're uh, provided to you when you sign up. They're provided to you when you sign up. I think just one, but it's big. It's, uh, I think it's a, might be a five gallon bucket. It's either three or five. Um, yep. Yeah, five gallon. Yes, they do. Um, you can keep it in your home if you want to. Most people keep it outside, but if say you're in an apartment, you can keep it in and have a good lid so there's no smell getting out. Uh, and I left out one great part. Customers can get 40 pounds of compost delivered for free every spring. and get discounts on additional quantities of compost, so put that trash back to work in our gardens. Cool. Did you think about, uh, I don't, Know the intimacy uh, with any intimacy how we get charged for our recycling program, but it seems like this would also divert some waste that goes into our recycling, like newspaper, cardboard. Yeah, plates. it definitely could. The funny thing about recycling is the price really fluctuates. Uh, last year we were paying fifty-five, sixty dollars a ton. Uh, this year we're paying an average of five dollars a ton. The last three months we've been getting paid. Um, so based on what year it is, you either want to, you know, put as much as you can in the recycling or minimize recycling as much as you can. The most expensive has always been land. Uh, recycling is somewhere in the middle and, and those would be the cheapest option yet. But yeah, we could talk about that for a while. It's very interesting. And, and I think one thing we could do is year to year, we could communicate to waste well customers. Hey, this year we want you to put your newspaper in your compost. This year we're not because we're getting paid for it. Might be able to do some things like that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, any other questions on this agenda item? Alrighty. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe you can recognize those folks. Yeah. Absolutely, anything we can do to encourage people to sign up, we will. Cool. Um, the next item on the agenda is, oh, I'm sorry, Bill, go ahead. Um. <clears throat> Probably pretty similar. I, I would defer to wastewater guys if we want to be, be doing that. Um, what, what was the question? Environmentally, put a banana peel down the garbage disposal. You're not, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, you're going to need to buy a new garbage disposal. <laughs> Don't put garbage peel. No, stop it. Don't do it anymore. <laughs> I'll send, I'll send the plumbing inspector yeah. to your house. <laughs> In all seriousness, it doesn't help our sewer plates. Our sewer plates don't have to treat that garbage. But it costs more money to then treat the water that comes through the system. And whatever else you're putting in there. <laughs> Here's the best way of answering the question. My, my son-in-law is a plumber. 
he does not have a garbage disposal in his house. Does that answer the question? Uh, sorry, I'm experiencing either operator error or technical difficulties. Um, the next item on our agenda, number eight, is to hold a public hearing on October 20th, 2021 to amend section 3-38.D to add a new section to establish the community campus committee, which is something that was discussed last month. Um, any, uh, comments or questions by council on this agenda item. This was this uh, was presented at the public safety committee and I don't think there was any there's no dissent on council but there was no there was no real questions raised about it. I think it was pretty straightforward and uh, and very much in line from what the committee was before. Um, so Yeah, so I guess we don't really need to discuss it. We just need to set the date. Is that correct? Uh, does October 20th work for everybody? Sure. I think we're going to be here already. Already. October 20th it is. Um, the next item on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, can I, can, I get yes. a, uh, can I get a clarification on the uh, base 12 composting? Was it council's consent for uh, the sustainability director to pursue that? I believe so. Does anyone disagree with that? Yes. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John. The, thanks, Kevin. The next item on the agenda is to discuss uh, sending the solicitor to the zoning hearing board uh, relative to an application at 501. Hannam Avenue. Avenue. Yeah, so this application is for uh, the applicant seeking relief for two criteria. One is for the parking spaces. Required to have 60 parking spaces. Requesting 40. And they're also requesting a uh, relief from the maximum front yard setback in the commercial service, which is 20 feet. See from the plan there, that building is going to be set back much farther than the maximum of 20 feet <clears throat> set back. One dimensional variance and one for the max uh, minimum parking requirements. What building is this? This is the laundromat on Hannam Avenue. We redeveloped North Adonis office. Uh, ready? Uh, any? So, um, Mike, uh, the uh, this I was chairing some marker at this yeah, point. Yeah. So um, it came through, and, and the committee agreed that we, you know, three O that we should not send a solicitor. But um, the solicitor, Mr. Nagel, was there, and he mentioned he would, you know, very much like if we would send a letter of recommendation to the zoning hearing board on behalf of council because of the development in that area. To you know, something that would really benefit the area. Um, I, we all agreed that that was probably a great idea, but we wanted to bring it to council. I don't think we actually had a recommendation for that. Did we? Was it 3L? Yeah. So that really would be the ask, not to send a solicitor, but to send a letter of recommendation to the zoning hearing board to approve that. Any thoughts from council on that aspect of this, whether we should support this application for redevelopment of the long Good with that? Alrighty, um, Kevin, I, ass I assume that's something you can handle. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, reverse subdivision plan for East Chestnut Street. Yes, thank you. I'll wait for Mr. Mann to get the plan up there, but this is a, a fairly simple plan for a reverse subdivision. 
of 243 and 245 East Chestnut. Currently, there is a uh, twin home there. Uh, the applicant seeks to bind those two parcels into one, bind the two twin homes into a single family dwelling. Construct Sorry? I don't have construction plans. I do just have the reverse subdivision plan with. It, it's. Yeah, no construction plans yet. It's just the site plan with the lot line elimination for the parcel. It's approved by the planning commission, or a, rec a recommended approval for the planning commission. There's no zoning issues associated with it. And Chester County Planning Commission had no comments on the review either. Um, anybody else want to comment on agenda item number 10? Sent to uh, our subdivision plan. Ready. Next item are R3. I believe it's three. ARB uh, applications, all of which seem relatively standard and which the committee approved. Any comments or questions on ARB? These are all pretty straightforward. It's Mark Ruth. I, I have any issues with any of these. So. Thanks, Mike. Comments or questions from the audience on the HARB applications? Sent on agenda item number 11. Silence is golden. Um, number 12, turn the microphone over to Mr. Flynn. First is to direct the borough manager to prepare an advertisement seeking residents to serve on the Pension Committee contingent upon Council's approval of that ordinance. Paul, we talked a number of months ago about establishing a, a Pension Committee. All the documentation went to the solicitor and the information was filled out. Now we're at the position where we can advertise for the members of the board. Uh, and we, the committee felt that Mr. Perone and Mr. Metric could advertise and get the members set prior to getting the uh, manager for the uh, funds. So that this is, is a, they were asking for us to, uh, to advertise an approval and we said yes. All right. Contin um, contingent upon the ordinance being passed tomorrow night. Yeah. I assume we would interview those candidates like we do anyway. Yes. Is, it, is this something that we're, we're gonna, like with the ordinance specify tomorrow night that it's starting like January 1, is that, we're starting next year or later date? No, we'd, uh, I, we'd like to get the committee uh, organized as soon as possible. The council can, there's a list of things in the ordinance that you, you're gonna have the ability to hand off to them uh, for like, you know, job tasks for them to do. Um, and then it's kind of open-ended where you can add them anything financial that you want in the future. Okay. We had a civic-minded uh, financial planner sitting up on the dais. Anybody think of one, let me know. Uh, consent to mm -hmm. item number 12? Item number 13 is to approve the assumption changes for the 2021 actuarial police pension valuations as recommended by Mockenhaupt Benefits Group. Barb. Good evening. Uh, so last month, uh, council approved the um, valuation assumptions for the non-uniform. This month, we're asking that um, council approve the, the assumed changes for the police pension plan. They're all relatively similar to what you voted last month. Um, number one being um, lowering the inflation rate from 2.75 to 2.50. Other ones are very similar to what was passed last month for the non-uniform plan. 
the committee felt that it was a 3-0 to move forward on this. Any questions for Barb on the evaluation assumption? Questions from the audience? Uh, consent for item number 13? Item number 14 is to approve the 2022 minimum municipal obligation for the police and non-uniformed pension plans. And as provided by Muckenhaupt Benefits Group. We don't have a copy of this right now, but this is basically just information that we're presenting to council. Um, it will be in the 22 budget. It's for both the police pension and the non-uniform pension plans. Um, based on this information, the police plan will go up about $10,000 and the non-uniform plan will go down almost $112,000. So we're currently using BB and T. Um, they do the administration on both pension plans. BB and T has now merged in, to be known as Truist. Um, this um, contract will actually provide us a savings over three years. Currently, we're paying a little over two hundred and eight thousand dollars for the administration services, and based on the pricing plan that they're able to put into place for us. Uh, we'll be paying $107,000, so that's a little over $101,000 savings over three years for the same services that are in place now. Bill. Any other comments or questions on item number 15? Ready. Consent. Thank you, Barb. Uh, next items on the agenda are approval of the August 17th and 18th meeting minutes. Have any issue with the minutes? Consent. Ready. And then the last is the is a report. Uh, for the use of Bradford Avenue by PennDOT relating to a detour on 162. So this is a quick informational item. Um, tropical storm hurricane, big storm Ida, um, damaged the road, uh, the bridge over the East Branch Brandywine on 62. We PennDOT does not know when that bridge is going to get repaired. And so they've created a detour route that necessitates the use of a portion of Bradford Avenue. But I'm at the committee, they asked they asked uh, the borough to look into plans of the detour. 
it's a good sign that Pen PennDOT has prepared these plans. It means they've thought through options, they've created a sign plan for it. This is sort of standard procedure for PennDOT to implement it. What they need from the borough is um, permission for commercial vehicles to use that portion of Bradford Avenue north of the Fame Fire Company. So that's a good idea and it facilitate this detour. And it's really just an informational item for council. It's a question of enforcement. We have a we have law on our books that says you can't drive a commercial vehicle on Bradford Avenue. Not a toll road. <laughs> way exactly, a way station and a toll road. <laughs> it's uh, going along well. <laughs> I'm sure it could be brought up in conversations. <clears throat> this is how the turnpike started. Yep. Give me a couple bucks. Yes, the portion of Bradford Avenue North. Yeah, from Everhart Park up to uh, Hannam Avenue, no commercial vehicles except for municipal vehicles, trucks. Uh, yes, we actually had one of our officers who also is an officer of East Bradford, if it's, we share services, has issued a citation to one of the East Bradford Township uh, Public Works. There are already construction going on over there for the townhome. We've already got construction vehicles on that road. Uh, so I was having a, a back and forth a little bit with us. Uh, Sue Walker, who's the uh, district director for uh, uh, representative uh, Chrissy Houlihan's office um, and uh, Bernie, you know, sent sent a couple emails uh, in particular requesting to to speak with uh, Sue Walker as the district director related to the uh, the flooding where ambulances can't get to Chester County Hospital, uh, the train, as well as uh, the ongoing post office saga, uh, and she just wanted some buy in that it wasn't just Bernie, so. Is everybody good with uh, us uh, convening a meeting uh, with district director on those items A and B? Would you like us to discuss anything else? Yes, uh, anything we can do and get funding to help get studies for Goose Creek and the flooding along Goose Creek it should be um, top of the list in my opinion. I think that that's. Yeah, that, that, the, thank you, Mr. Pro. And Mr. Mayor, thanks for following up. the uh, The meeting was supposed to be it was supposed to happen yesterday, uh, and um, we I responded back to the uh, councilwoman, um, Chrissy Holland's office, the congresswoman Chrissy Holland's office, uh, that the time frame that they had allotted for us wouldn't be enough time to to cover those three small topics, which are hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, the mayor's picked the ball up, and uh, uh, what they thought was a lone wolf sitting to the far right hand side of the dais was trying to ram something down congressional office. And uh, those three items are extremely important to the borough because when it floods, you can't use the emergency route to get to the hospital. Number two, our train uh, have a buy in from the, the Senate, the United States Senate. And, uh, and also the um, the post office is a wreck in town. And um, I thought there were three very important items that would take more than a lunch break. Uh, I canceled the meeting. Uh, I was very nice. 
I just said, you know, I think it takes more time than a lunch break to uh, hear out what we need to talk about. Thank you, Mayor, for picking the ball up. See, there, the, uh, th there's a lesson here, part of this also, um, is when you all discuss things that are important for the entire borough, um, I think it's important that you all at least say, hey, listen, um, on behalf of the borough, can the manager or the mayor or someone on the council commit to you know rallying the troops and going talking to our uh, our politicians? I and mean, that's what they're there for. They're going to help us get stuff that we need to get done. Um, and I understand Sue Walker's position. You know, Bernie was doing this a one-on-one. -on -one. She's probably thinking, hey, we got one council member. I'm not listening to this guy. But if it's Bernie had the authority to say, on behalf of Borough Council, I'd like to sit down with you. Uh, that was a totally different weight. I'll, I'll certainly work to, to set up that meeting and invite all of council and administration and we'll, we'll have those conversations and whatever else John might have. <laughs> yeah. John O'Brien, Executive Director, Westchester Business Improvement District. There is a out of service mailbox that has been sitting in front of 50 East or West Market Street. I've tried contacting the airport road postmaster. I've I'll put a official request in with Chrissy Houlihan's office. It's been sitting there with caution tape like in the middle of the sidewall for the last two months. It's federal property, so I know the borough can't touch it. So hopefully that's low hanging fruit. They can put a little pressure and get that eyesore out of there. Sure. The concrete that it's full to do, that's might make it a little more of a concern, but thanks. The, the crazy thing about what Mr. O'Brien is saying, we don't know whether the post office, after the, it was struck by a vehicle, ever came and took the mail out of it. That mail could be still sitting in there for ever. You know, it, it's, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh, it, it, I, knew I, would, I knew that's where you mailed it. <laughs> oh, that gift card I'm still waiting for. Any other items you'd like to discuss, or is that sufficient? All right, so we'll start with that. Another quick question uh, separately. Are we getting an extension on the, or are we asking for an extension on the um, outside dining? I've got some questions on that. Yeah, no, yeah, no that's, the, you know, that's it. That's all we get. Uh, we haven't asked for any extensions. The, uh, as Mr. Galey brought up a little bit ago, you know, jokingly, it's, um, we're, Getting close to being able to turn, it's it's called a turn back. The feds turn back a piece of the federal highway system to a local government. Uh, so we're trying to get that for the four blocks of Gates. We've been working on that for a couple of years. But instead of doing a turn back, we're going to do a flip flop. We're going to take that and we're, we're going to uh, have the new three take you know the regular detour that we use right now. Um, and part of the feds issue. A while ago, when they first denied it, was the connectability uh, with uh, Route 100 and 322. So by going up Chestnut Street, they actually accomplished that by doing uh, by doing that. If we give that to them, so it's a work in progress, and hopefully it's done before I uh, say sayonara. Do we want to ask for an extension till November or anything like that? I mean, we, we got one last year, right? Well, at this point. To go back to the feds, it would take us about six months. And you know, John and I have spoken about it, you know, from the bid. Um, and there was no big push either way from the business community to, to do it. At least that was my understanding. Uh, yeah, John O'Brien, Executive Director of Westchester Business Improvement District. So, I mean, there's a couple issues at play. We saw last year when the weather got colder, the turnout on the street was a lot lower. We're at a bit of a different position now where folks are more comfortable sitting inside. The other issue facing us is the Pico Harmony 4 project is still ongoing. Mr. Perm probably knows more about this than I do, but 
they are finishing up their portion of Gay Street, but they still need to do the 100 block of North Darlington, the 100 block of North Church Street, and the 50 and 100 block of North High Street. So there is potential for a lot of problems if they're closing down those blocks in terms of deliveries and emergency services with having Gay Street shut down at the same time. So from the bids perspective, we're trying to balance the interests there as well. But I think council would, you know, we can talk, but maybe consider the extension of the cafe permits as we did last year. Uh, they end, I think, in in the very beginning, beginning of December. So depending upon that, if council might see fit to allow outdoor dining and the, the normal cafe permits on sidewalks that we currently allow, that might be beneficial. Thank you. It's like a 338 West Minor. So I live on West Minor where the traffic is pretty much redirected. And I will share that as great as I think it's been for the businesses, I do think that it needs to be balanced out. Like our street has become very, very busy, you know, with the traffic being diverted down that way. So just consideration for that as well. Thank you. So yeah, I got one question. Uh, this morning at the bid meeting, um, the question came up about expanding the business district. Now, the bid, uh, the business improvement district just went through the reorganization last year. Spent quite a bit of money doing it. Is it, does it, council have the ability to expand the business district or does that have to come through the, the bid? I, I was hoping Mr. Perone would know the answer. That, say it stops right now at Matlock Street. If we want to take it down to Adams Avenue, where the apartment buildings let's, are going to let's, be. Let, let's take a step back and before we get the subject matter. There's a new law in the books that I explained about a month ago. Can't discuss things to the council meeting. That's not right. on the agenda unless it's an emergency. Very so good. If we need answers to those questions, we can research them. We can agenda next month and so we can discuss it. Good. Thank you. Authority to change districts. But I'm telling you that it's just a, a legal point that can be answered. The answer was there before the meeting, it's here now, after the meeting. I don't see why we can't discuss that. 